Module 4. Healthy Mind, Healthy Body. Exercise 1, page 61. One, practice meditation to achieve peace of mind. Two, make ethical choices. Three, get the sleep you need. Four, exercise regularly. Five, solve crosswords and exercise your mind. Six, spend time in the sunshine. 7. Manage your stress. 4a. Technology and health. Exercise 1a, page 62. 1. Shoulder strain. 2. Hearing loss. 3. Thumb arthritis. 4. A skin infection. Acne. A rash. 5. Eye strain. Exercise 2, page 62. modern marvels or new nasties how would you cope without modern gadgets what would you do if you didn't have your mobile phone your mp3 player or your games console believe it or not you might be better off with new games consoles, you have to move around in front of the TV to control the action on screen. When you make the same motion again and again in a confined space, the results can be quite serious. Repeated arm motions can cause strain to your shoulder. Doctors warn that you must not play for too long, and you should warm up first. Their advice is to prepare for the game like you would for the real thing. Earphones play the music directly into your ear canal. The type of music doesn't matter, but the volume on your MP3 player does. It can cause hearing loss. Researchers recommend that you set the volume at a low level, where you can still hear conversations around you. If people have to shout so you can hear them, the volume is too loud. Sending text messages is as easy as moving your thumb. However, too much texting can cause thumb arthritis. This can lead to restriction of movement, swelling, and pain. To prevent this condition, known as texter's thumb, you should send fewer messages or use different fingers when you text. A mobile phone is full of bacteria. When you press it against your face and ear, it can lead to skin problems, such as acne skin infections, and rashes. Sharing your mobile phone makes these problems even worse. Dermatologists say that you should clean your phone before you use it. If someone borrows your phone, make sure to clean it after they finish. Computers are useful tools for research and entertainment. However, staring at a computer screen for an extended period of time can cause eye strain. Some of the symptoms include blurred vision, dry eyes, and a difficulty distinguishing between colors. Opticians warn that you mustn't spend too much time looking at the screen. Take frequent breaks. You don't have to leave the room. Just close your eyes and let them relax.
4B Home Remedies Exercise 1, page 64 1. Have a headache 2. Have a stomach ache 3. Get a sunburn 4. Have a mouth ulcer 5. Have smelly feet 6. Have hay fever 7. Get a cold, get the flu 8. Have a sore throat 9. Have a bad cough 10. Have an itchy rash 11. Have insomnia 12. Have bad breath 13. Have a minor cut 14. Have watery eyes Exercise 2, page 64. Remedies from the Kitchen Cupboard Next time you wake up with a sore throat or a few spots, perhaps you don't have to run straight to the doctor. You could try opening the kitchen cupboard instead. There are many natural remedies hiding there. In the past, people had to use natural remedies to cure health problems. Garlic Garlic has a bad reputation because of its strong smell, but it's great for your immune system. If you have a cold or the flu, you can add chopped garlic to hot water with a little honey and lemon and make some tea. Got a few spots? You could try rubbing garlic on them. Garlic has antibacterial qualities, so the spots will disappear in no time. Tea. Can you feel a headache coming on? Boil some water and make yourself a nice cup of tea. The caffeine in the tea will open up the constricted blood vessels that cause a headache. Also, if you suffer from hay fever and have itchy, watery eyes all summer, Put cold, wet tea bags over them. The tannin in the tea will really help. Vinegar People have used vinegar as a natural remedy for over 6,000 years. It's great for minor cuts or itchy rashes. Do you have a sunburn so painful you can't move? You could try adding one cup of white vinegar to a cool bath. This will soothe your skin. Baking soda. Do you have smelly feet? Sprinkle some baking soda in your shoes and have odor-free feet all day long. Baking soda is a great natural antiperspirant. It can also help with indigestion because it neutralizes stomach acid. Just mix a teaspoon into a glass of water and drink it slowly. Honey. Next time you have a sore throat, try swallowing a spoonful of honey. Like garlic, honey helps destroy bacteria. If you have a cut or a graze, just put a little honey on it and cover it with a plaster. It might help you with insomnia too. Drinking a glass of warm milk with some honey in it can help you sleep. Ginger. Do you have an upset stomach? You could try chewing a piece of ginger. You can also do this before a journey if you suffer from travel sickness. Ginger may also help you if you have bad breath. These are just a few of the natural remedies in our cupboards. There are hundreds more. Exercise 7, page 65. 
Sally. Last week I burnt my finger while I was taking some cakes out of the oven. It was a small burn, but it really hurt. Anyway, I turned the tap on and put my finger under cold water for a while, of course. But then my mum told me to put some honey on it. It worked really well. It didn't really hurt afterwards. And after about a week, I couldn't even see the burn anymore. Greg. Recently, I had a bad stomach ache, like indigestion, after eating a big meal at my grandparents' house. Immediately, my grandma gave me a banana to eat. It was very difficult to eat because I had just eaten. But after a while, I realized that I didn't have a stomach ache anymore. Try it next time you get indigestion. It really works. Simon. I had a bad cold last month, and I read on the internet that drinking warm lemon juice and water with a spoonful of honey in it is good for colds. The lemons contain a lot of vitamin C, so they help you to get rid of the cold faster, and the honey is good for sore throats and coughs. Anyway, I made lots of warm drinks with honey and lemon, and I got better really quickly. I'll definitely do the same thing the next time I have a bad cold. 4C Culture Corner Exercise 1, page 66 Australia's Most Dangerous Animals Australia is a great country, but it has some of the most dangerous animals in the world. Here are some of the worst. Avoid them at all costs. Spiders. Australia has some of the most dangerous spiders in the world. The dark-coloured funnel web spider is one of the most poisonous. Its teeth are so strong that it can even bite through a shoe. If one bites you, you need antivenom very quickly. Another scary spider is the redback, with the red stripe on its back. It hides in backyards and sometimes homes all over Australia. And it can give a very nasty bite, causing horrible pain, sweating and vomiting. Snakes. The ten most poisonous snakes in the world all live in Australia. The inland taipan is the most dangerous in the world, and its venom is 50 times stronger than an Indian cobra's. The eastern brown snake is a long, up to 1.8 metres, fast-moving snake, and the second most dangerous in the world. Fortunately, both of these snakes usually stay away from humans, so bites are quite rare. Sea creatures. Watch out for Australia's many dangerous sea creatures, especially the box jellyfish. It's almost invisible to swimmers and has caused more deaths than snakes, sharks and crocodiles put together. Each of its three-metre-long tentacles has 500,000 needles for injecting venom into its victims. Although it's very small, the blue-ringed octopus is also deadly. This pretty octopus lives in rock pools and has enough venom to kill ten men. Watch out for the six-metre-long saltwater crocodile, too. They can go 240 kilometres inland or out into the ocean and attack anything that moves, even sharks. Around rivers. The platypus may look cute, but the males have a poisonous spike on their back legs that they use in self-defense. Victims suffer from terrible pain that can last for up to three months. Four 
4D, Everyday English. Exercise 1A, page 67. Take some syrup. Take some cough syrup. Take some painkillers. Go to hospital for an x-ray. Put antiseptic cream on it. Put antibiotic cream on it. Use some eye drops. Use some ear drops. Use some nose drops. Exercise 2A, page 67. Come in and take a seat. What seems to be the problem? It's really swollen, itchy and painful. Let's take a look. I'm afraid it's infected. What should I do? I'll give you a prescription. Should I come back and see you again? Exercise 2B, page 67. Hello, Mr. Hall. Come in and take a seat. OK, thank you. Now, what seems to be the problem? Well, it's my shoulder. I got a mosquito bite a few days ago, and now it's really swollen, itchy and painful. OK, let's take a look. Hmm, yes, it's very red. I'm afraid it's infected. Oh, no. What should I do? You should put some antibiotic cream on it three times a day. I'll write you a prescription. Thank you. Should I come back and see you again? Only if it gets worse. OK. Thanks again. You're welcome. Exercise 4, page 67. One. Rough. Tough. Cough. Enough. Two. Two. Flu. Through. Toe. Three. Bought. Drought. Ought. Caught. Four. Round. Wound. Sound. Ground. 4E Amazing Abilities Exercise 1, page 68 Crawl Kick Grab Kneel Grip Bend Hang Exercise 2B, page 68. The French Spider-Man. While no one is looking, Frenchman Alain Robert jumps up an office building and starts to climb the wall. He hangs from balconies, crawls along ledges and grips the edges of the glass and concrete. There's no rope and no safety net. He's using only his bare hands. By the time he's halfway up, a crowd has gathered on the pavement below. After an hour, he reaches the top and the crowd sighs with relief. Alain has climbed over 85 of the tallest structures in the world, including the Eiffel Tower, the Empire State Building, and the Petronas Twin Towers in Malaysia. One of his first climbs was at the age of 12. He didn't have his flat keys, and his parents were out, but he was able to climb up the outside of the building, 
seven stories high, and crawl through a window. Nowadays, he can manage 80 stories, but amazingly, Alain suffers from vertigo. He feels dizzy when he's up high. He has fallen seven times, suffering dozens of broken bones, which has left him partly disabled. But this doesn't stop Alain. I only think about what I can do, not what I can't do, he says. So why does he do it? Apart from raising awareness about world issues such as climate change, Alain wants people to see their environment differently. He says, Maybe they think their building is ugly, this big tower with lots of glass, the opposite of a natural landscape. But for me, it's a kind of urban mountain. So I use the place where they work, and I make it a kind of wonderland. Everywhere I climb, I see people who are happy. After a climb, Alain often leaves in handcuffs. What he does is sometimes illegal, but most of the time he just gets a fine. The police say he can't climb public buildings, but the only thing that stops this daredevil is rain. When it's wet, Alain can't grip the slippery surfaces. In 2002, he got stuck on the 35th floor of London's Canary Wharf Tower when it started to rain. Alain risks his life every time he climbs a new building. His nickname may be Spider-Man, but he is no superhero. He's just an ordinary man living a very dangerous life. You can see videos of Alain in action on YouTube. Four F. Feeling afraid. Exercise one, page seventy. Thunderstorms. Spiders. The dark. Lifts. Injections. Flying. Snakes, heights, crowds, going to the dentist. Exercise 10, page 71. Phobias. As the doors of the lift close, your hands start to sweat. It's only a 10-second trip to the sixth floor, but your heart is beating fast. You're shaking like a leaf and you can't catch your breath. Everyone else in the lift seems calm. So what are you afraid of? Well, it sounds like you have claustrophobia, which is a fear of enclosed spaces. If you have a phobia like this, you're not alone. People can have either common phobias, like a fear of insects, needles and the dark, or some very strange ones indeed. Vicky Larrieux's fear of vegetables, for example, lacanophobia, makes a trip to the supermarket a nightmare. There are many other cases of odd phobias, such as ablutophobia, fear of washing, anthophobia, fear of flowers catoptrophobia, fear of mirrors, and even phobophobia, the fear of phobias themselves. Some of these fears might sound ridiculous to you, but to a person who suffers from them, they are very real. Sufferers may miss out on opportunities, such as going on holiday because they're afraid of flying, feel embarrassed about their phobia, even get teased by their friends. To understand the reason why some people have phobias, first we need to understand fear itself. When we sense danger, our brain sends signals to pump adrenaline around our body. Our heart beats faster, our skin sweats to keep us cool, and our muscles tense so that we are ready to escape the danger. This response is called fight or flight, which is necessary for our survival. 
If we met a bear while hiking, for instance, we would need to be ready to escape, fast. When someone suffers from a phobia, however, the danger is mostly in their minds. It's neither real nor rational. Maybe someone who is afraid of bees, for instance, once got badly stung by a bee. Their brain now remembers the experience and triggers a fear reaction every time they see a bee, or sometimes even just a photo of a bee. The fear signal is very strong, so the person believes the situation that they are in is more dangerous than it really is. So what's the solution for someone who has a phobia? Well, many try to avoid the places and situations which make them afraid but this only keeps the fear strong. It's much better for the person to try to face their fear, little by little. A person who is afraid of dogs, for example, could start by looking at a photo of a dog. Then they could stand near someone with a dog on a lead and slowly work up to the most difficult thing for them, maybe petting a dog. As they get used to the thing that they are afraid of, they will realize that their worst fear doesn't come true. In time, the brain will change how it reacts and their phobia will disappear for good. G. Skills. Exercise 3, page 72. Speaker 1. I just have so much to do this year. I have a lot of studying to do because it's my last year at school. And then I have to help out with chores at home because my mum and dad both work all day too. Then there's my weekend job in a shoe shop. I'm thinking of giving my job up because I just don't have enough time for it anymore. Speaker 2 My friends are all going away for the weekend, but I don't know if I can afford to go with them. Unfortunately, I often have to say no to my friends when they invite me somewhere. My parents don't have a lot of spare cash, so they can't give me a lot of pocket money. I'm trying to find a part-time job, but it's really difficult. Speaker 3 This winter, I just haven't felt as well as I usually do. I've had lots of coughs and colds, and I felt very tired. I have acne too. My mum wants me to make an appointment to see the doctor, but I think I've just worked too hard at school. I just need some rest and maybe some vitamins. Speaker 4 I've just been to the hairdressers and my hair looks terrible. I told the hairdresser to just shorten it a little, but she cut way too much off and now it's really short. I hate it. Plus, some acne has appeared on my chin. I can't believe it. It's Sarah's party on Saturday and I'm going to look awful. Speaker 5 We've just moved to a new area. I really like the new flat. It's much bigger than our old one. But I really hope my school is OK. I start on Monday. I'm really going to miss everyone at my old school. I hope I get used to everything quickly and I can make some good friends. 4i Curricula PSHE Exercise 1, page 74 Catch some Zs. What is sleep? Until quite recently, scientists believed that sleep was a simple resting state. But it isn't like this at all. When we sleep, our body temperature drops. Our heart rate and other bodily functions slow down, but our brains stay very active. 
What are the different stages? There are four different stages of sleep that repeat every 90 to 110 minutes. Stages N1 and N2 are light sleep, and we can easily wake up. In stage N3, we sleep more deeply, and it's harder to wake up. Some people may also sleepwalk or talk in their sleep. The last stage is REM sleep. Our eyes move around, our brain is very active, and we have a lot of dreams. Why do we need sleep? While we sleep, our brain sorts through information, replaces chemicals, repairs cells, and solves problems. Lack of sleep seriously affects our mind and body. When we don't rest enough, we may feel grumpy, forgetful, and unable to concentrate. Lack of sleep can also affect our immune system. Over a long time, it may cause depression and personality changes, and eventually even shorten our life. How much sleep do we need? It's different for everyone, but on average, babies need 16 to 18 hours of sleep, teenagers about 9, and adults about 7 to 8. Tips for getting a good night's sleep you should try to go to sleep and wake up at the same time every day. This helps your body to get into a routine. Avoid drinks like cola and coffee before bedtime. They contain caffeine that keeps you awake. Don't exercise or watch scary movies just before going to bed. This will wake your body up too much, and you might find it difficult to fall asleep. Have a calming bedtime routine, such as having a warm bath or reading. Skills 4 Exercise 2, page 76 No, I don't think students should take exams. I think that coursework and homework should count towards the final mark. How much a person can remember on a particular day of a particular subject is not a good way to judge them for a whole year's work. Many people do not do well in an exam situation. They get stressed and can't remember things that they know because their mind goes blank. Exercise 4, page 77. His face is a mask of determination as his fingers fumble with the lace of his shoe. Under his breath, he says over and over again, I am going to do this. I am going to do this. The people in the room stand watching, silently cheering him on. A huge shout goes up as he finally after countless attempts, manages to make a perfect bow. No, this story is not about a four-year-old learning to tie his shoelaces. It is, however, a story about a very courageous 60-year-old Canadian man named Frank Harabanek. Several years ago, Frank lost four of his fingers in a terrible accident at the factory where he worked. Along with losing his fingers, he lost the ability to do many of the everyday things that most of us take for granted. Without the help of his loving wife, Salata, Frank was unable to pull up his trousers, put on his socks, cut up his meat, or tie his own shoelaces. That has all changed now, thanks to technology. In June, Frank entered West Park Healthcare in Toronto to be fitted with prosthesis artificial body parts. In Frank's case, the prosthesis were four new fingers. The artificial fingers are made of a silvery-gray material and look strangely robotic. 
However, once a cover has been put over them, they will look exactly like the fingers on Frank's other hand. What with the difficult operation and the lengthy recuperation period, Frank has been through a terrific ordeal. But the important thing is that he is through it, and he is now ready to take on the world. Grinning from ear to ear, Frank told reporters that one of the first things that he is going to do when he gets home is invite friends round for a meal. We're having a dinner party tomorrow night, and I'm doing all the cooking. Slatter has been through so much, I am giving her the night off. Slatter smiles and adds, Before Frank's accident, our hobby was fly fishing. Fishing season opens in a few weeks, and with the luck we've been having lately, I just know we're going to catch a big one this year. Exercise 7, page 77. What do you do when you and your parents disagree about things? What kind of things? Well, let's say that you want to go somewhere or do something, and they won't let you. Well, I think it helps to find out their reasons why they won't give me permission. Usually, they are only thinking of my health and safety, so I try and ease their worries, so I can do what I want. What do you mean? Well, if they think I will be out too late at night, I'll offer to come home a bit earlier, or ask them to pick me up. If they are worried about me falling behind with my schoolwork, I'll reassure them that I will do all my homework before I go out, and things like that. If you can reassure them, they will feel better about letting you do stuff. I've tried that, but it didn't work. Well, you could always ask them under what circumstances they would be willing to allow you to do certain things, and then agree to their terms. If you compromise a bit, you will probably both get what you want. My parents just won't listen. Oh dear. Well, you definitely have to talk to them and try to remind them that they were young once too. Perhaps they will realise that all teenagers rebel against conformity in some way and it's perfectly normal to want to go out and socialise and do all sorts of things at our age. That's good advice, thanks. No problem. Let me know how things go. Yeah, I will. Exercise 1, page 78. Banya, a Russian tradition. People have always enjoyed bathing, not only as a way to keep clean, but also to relax. The ancient Greeks and Romans built elaborate and expensive bathhouses in their cities all over the world. Russian people enjoy bathing, and the banya, or steam bath, is a very old and popular tradition in Russian culture. Even today, almost every village and town in Russia has its own banya. The banya can be in a small cabin or large building with several bathing areas. They usually have at least three rooms, an entrance, a washing room and a steam room. The steam room is called the parilka. It has rows of benches, a stove with very hot stones in it and large buckets of water. Bathers 